Okay, I want to do my second part video on Walt Simonson. Um, as you says, as you seen in my first video, I focus mostly on his work with uh, Thor, but um, I want to focus this video on his early days with DC. That's where he uh, broke in in 1973. Uh, for those that's not familiar with Walter Simonson, he went to art school in 1972 and then um, in 73 he got his break with uh, DC and part of his thesis in his art school was uh, creating uh, a book. Uh, it was black and white, uh, you know, it's something that he uh, created but it was called Star Slammers and uh, here is a reprint well in 1983 uh, Marvel put out this graphic novel and it's um, it's a reprint of what Walter Simonson uh, created way back in uh, you know 72, 73 and um, I believe Back then, it was black and white, and I think Walter Simonson most likely um, retouched some of the penciling. I'm just guessing. So I have never seen the original black and white production when uh, he was in college, so I don't know exactly if uh, he did anything to it, but um, if you have a chance to take a look at this book, it's fairly cheap. Uh, you know. You can see that Walt Simonson was one of those artists that I mentioned that hit his peak fairly quickly. I mean, if you look at the art of this book, um, you can see that his style really was you know, right on from the very start. Uh, it did not uh, evolve uh, greatly. Uh, sure, he improved just like any artist should, but I think from the very beginning, uh, you can see uh, how great he was. I mean, you know, I'm a big Kirby fan, but I will tell you that you know, if you look at the early Kirby drawing compared to his mid 60s drawing, it's night and day. Um, but when you look at Walt Simonson drawing in 1972, 1973, it is just beautiful. Phenomenal. Um, it's not a surprise that when he bring his portfolio and samples to DC that they hire him pretty quickly. Um, the story for this is fairly simple. Um, you know, you gotta understand. You know, he was an artist. You know, he was not trying to write any kind of epic. But the art of this book is just stunning. Um, so I highly recommend it. I know. Um, recently, I saw a few Star Slammers book on eBay that's produced by a different company. I'm not sure if that is new story, uh, but if anybody knows something about those, let me know because if it is new story regarding the Star Slammers, I might go picking them up. But look at this. This looks a lot like the work that he's done uh, today. You know, as you can see, it just really really good you know like I said it's a very simple story um, nothing complex I certainly think the art is better than the story um, for this graphic novel but uh, you know for the big Simonson's fan out there I think uh, you will truly enjoy um, this book because uh, it gives you an idea of what he was from the very start is really really fun it's a lot of fun look at this look at this action page you know like I said even if this was drawn back in 73 it looked like something that he drew for Thor like I said I really really like his style and and I, I I'm so thankful that uh, you know he chose this medium to uh, showcase his talent so, so this is it. This is Star Slammer. Go check it out if you haven't. Then what he did was, you know, once he got into DC, 
what they did was they, you know, he, he corroborated with uh, Archie Goodwin to uh, draw a backup story for Detective Comics. It was a fairly short series of uh, a character called Manhunter. And uh, here's my beautiful copy of 439. This is such a tough book to find in near mint condition, but uh, I'm really happy to have a nice copy. Um, and it's, it's just, it's too bad because, you know, a lot of these stories are so short. Uh, the Manhunter are limited to like the last part of the book. And it is just like six, six pages or eight pages or so. But, um, you know, it is just beautiful. Luckily, um, DC reprinted it. So, for uh, the fan today, if you want to read his first work with DC, I highly recommend go on eBay and grab this copy. Uh, it is cheap, it's affordable, and it is absolutely stunning. Um, if you go inside, it have a pretty good little blurb on how he got started and um, right off the bat you will see how great Simonson was I mean he was just it's, the story is a lot of fun the character is great I wish they can do more with the character but uh, I think what amazed me with uh, this book this reprint is how beautiful look at the detail uh, to the drawing, uh, it's just stunning. I mean, the the work by Walt Simonson is just beautiful. Um, you know, from the very get go, you know, he's one of those guys that can story tell. You you don't need a lot of words. Um, you can simply just look at the beautifully drawn panels and just follow the story. You know, there isn't a whole lot of words that need to explain anything. I highly recommend anyone that have not read this uh, book to go get it because I think uh, it is such fabulous work uh, by Simonson and um, you know I you know I, I can't say enough about how much I love this copy and the reprint done justice because it, it the color is so vibrant and um, you know he's inking his drawing just top notch. Uh, the end of the storyline, you also have uh, Batman is a guest, and uh, you know it's, he can draw Batman just as good as anybody. Look at that, beautiful. The attention to details. Last panel. Look at that. How can you not love that? Oof. Anyhow, um, highly recommend it if you're a, a big Samson fan to have this. Uh, of course, I have here uh, my beat up water damage copy of the great X Men and Teen Titan um, team up. Beautiful. Look at this. Um, it's one of the few books that I bought, read, and uh, it forgot to put it in a bag. And then for a decade, it sit there and turn mildew and get moisture damage and all that stuff. But it is fantastic. And this book is fun in that it has Terry Austin as an anchor. And, uh, you know, if anyone knows, look at this. I don't have to go very far to show you how great Terry Austin is. He can ink anybody. You know, Walt Simonson is not an easy artist to ink. Not at all. I can tell you I have seen many inkers fail miserably trying to um, ink his work. But this is one of those few um, corroboration that, you know, it's, it's more of a showcase of the talent of Terry Austin is an anchor. Look at that beautiful drawing. Beautiful angle. Beautiful book. You know, like I said, it's such a great, great 
front shot. Let me show you the back cover. I think the way to pronounce it is dark shield. I'm not sure, dark sea, dark shield. But uh, that is a gorgeous drawing of Phoenix. Uh, lastly, before I, I want to go, is uh, you know for the his later work, you know it's it's really good. You know for the Simonson fan out there, you know after he left Thor, he did a small run with the Fantastic Four, and it is fantastic. You know, um, you know after Burn left the Fantastic Four, I couldn't stand the books for a few years because it it was just terrible. I I, I stopped buying. Uh, the books and then when I heard Simonson is coming over I was extremely excited and as in many of his production you know I was not disappointed the stories the arts of his short run on uh, Fantastic Four it just fantastic it is really good and uh, look at this it's one of my favorite cover that he did for the Fantastic Four Simply awesome. You know, so, if you haven't uh, have a chance to check out his work with the Fantastic Four, I think you should. It's it's fairly inexpensive. You know, I mean, the Fantastic Four has never been one of those books that uh, that expensive to buy as far as back issues. But look at this gorgeous splash page with Doctor Doom. Stunning. Great stuff. And you know, so check it out. You know, if it's, like I said, it is not expensive at all. And if you are a Walt Simonson fan, it's fairly affordable entertainment. You know, you will not be disappointed, trust me. Uh, and that's it. I hope you enjoy my videos on Walt Simonson. No doubt I am a big, big fan. Thank you. Bye.